Okay, this is where we left off um, slide number 45. All right, so what we're talking about is that ion channels are going to um, allow ions to cross the plasma membrane. Ions have a charge. So when a positive or a negative ion crosses the plasma membrane, then it's going to um, affect the resting membrane potential or voltage across the plasma membrane, which at rest is negative. Um, and this is what's going to lead to an action potential or um, nerve impulse. Okay, so there are two classes of ion channels. They can either be chemically gated, that means there's a gate, and to open that gate, a chemical has to bind to the gate. Um, so gated, chemically gated ion channels are opened by chemical messengers such as neurotransmitters. And ACH receptors on muscle cells are examples of chemically gated ion channels because when ACH uh, acetylcholine binds to those receptors, the ion channels open up and it allows sodium ions to enter and leads to an action potential or nerve impulse or um, muscle contraction. All right, then there's voltage gated. That means the ion channel will open in response or close in response to changes in voltage or membrane potential. So a chemically gated ion channel works like this. If the chemical messenger ACH is this green molecule right here, and it binds to that channel, the channel opens and allows um, ions to move through it. If it's a voltage gated channel, then the channel will open in response to a voltage change. Um, all right, so uh, motor neurons are the neurons or nerve cells which stimulate the um, skeletal muscles. And they're called somatic motor neurons. Somatic motor neurons because somatic refers to the skeletal muscle system. Um, they consist of axons. That travel from the central nervous system to the muscles so that could be from the brain or spinal cord to the skeletal muscle and each axon will branch as it enters the muscle and the axon branches that end on muscle fibers form what we call a neuromuscular junction or motor end plate. And each muscle fiber has one neuromuscular junction and one motor neuron. One motor neuron, one muscle fiber, one neuromuscular junction. So, um, so when we look here, what we're looking at is basically the end of the motor neuron, the axon terminal or end of one of the branches of the motor neuron. And then we're looking at the plasma membrane or sarcolemma of the um, muscle fiber. And you can see here's Z line, Z line. We're looking at um, the, the width of a sarcomere. Um, so something's gonna have to happen within that neuron that's gonna cause changes across the plasma membrane or sarcolemma of the muscle fiber that's going to lead to a muscle contraction. So you need to know some terminology. The end of the axon is called the axon terminal. The space between the neuron and the muscle fiber is called the synaptic cleft because what they're doing is they're synapsing. They're, um, one is causing a reaction in the other. Um, synaptic vesicles that store neurotransmitter, in this case is acetylcholine or ACH, are present within the axon terminals of the neuron. And then the sarcolemma or um, plasma membrane of the muscle 
fiber is going to enfold, and those foldings are called junctional folds. And those junctional folds contain millions of acetylcholine receptors, which again are chemically gated ion channels. NMJ is neuromuscular junction. The neuromuscular junction consists of axon terminal, synapse cleft, and the junctional folds um, of the muscle fiber. All right, now four steps must occur for skeletal muscle to contract. You have to have events happen at the neuromuscular junction. So something has to happen within the motor neuron, the um, somatic motor neuron, before a signal can get to the muscle fiber. Then those events lead to the excitation of the muscle fiber, the excitation contraction coupling, where the um, actin and myosin are connected, and then cross-bridge cycling is actually when the contraction occurs and contraction and relaxation of the muscle fiber. All right, and this is hard to look at um, because it's so it looks so small, but um, the four events are basically uh, divided up and simplified for you here. Um, if you look at this illustration, the illustration of the neuromuscular junction, as I talk about the different um, events. The events that occur at the neuromuscular junction are first, an action potential has to travel down that axon. That's a voltage change traveling all the way down that axon. The voltage is changing all across the um, plasma membrane of the axon. And it's going to travel all the way down until um, that um, action potential is going to cause the release of acetylcholine from these vesicles into the synaptic cleft. And then the acetylcholine is going to bind to these little purple receptors that are actually chemically gated ion channels. And that's going to lead to sodium, which has a positive charge moving into the muscle fiber. Sodium is going to cross into the muscle fiber. So positive charge is going to come in, and that's going to change that negative voltage to a positive voltage. Um, the acetyl binding causes depolarization, which is in plate potential. Depolarization occurs when sodium ions enter the muscle fiber, okay? So that depolarization means when the negative um, membrane potential is changed to positive because the sodium ions have a positive charge. The muscle fiber is going to be excited. Um, it, uh, an action potential is going to be triggered in the sarcolemma. And the action potential will then travel down the T tubules, which remember reach deep into the muscle fiber for this purpose. This is going to lead to the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The calcium will bind to troponin, which is going to shift the tropomyosin to uncover the binding sites on actin. And for step four, um, after myosin heads bind to the actin, there's going to be a cross bridge cycling. So there's going to be a contraction basically. Step four is your actual contraction and, and then uh, relaxation of your muscle. Okay, so here's specifically the events at the neuromuscular junction listed for you. AP stands for action potential. That action potential arrives at the axon terminal. And that action potential triggers voltage-gated calcium channels to open. The calcium ions enter the motor neuron. The calcium entry, remember this is the nerve. This is at the axon terminal, okay? At the, and let's write that, at the axon terminal of the neuron. Okay, calcium entering into the axon terminal causes release of ACH into the synaptic cleft. 
that ACH is going to bind, it's going to diffuse across that synaptic cleft, it's going to bind the receptors on the muscle fiber, sodium is going to then enter those gates, changing the um, resting potential from negative to positive, and this is called end plate potential. And then the acetylcholine is going to be degraded by an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase. If this did not happen, you would just get continual stimulation of your um, muscle fibers. So um, the acetylcholine, once it does its job, has to be degraded and um, taken back up into the axon terminal. So here's a picture showing you all of these um, events. The action potential arrives at the axon terminal. That means a voltage is going to travel down the plasma membrane of that neuron until it reaches the axon terminal. It's going to travel all down to the ends of the axon terminal. It's, got, it's going to lead to calcium, these voltage-gated um, calcium channels opening. Calcium is going to move in and activate the um, synaptic vesicles that contain acetylcholine. They're going to fuse with the membrane of the axon terminal and release the acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. And this is everything I just said. <laughs> and then um, that process is exocytosis, by the way. And we're learning that. Um, acetylcholine is going to bind to the receptors on the sarcolemma of the muscle fiber. And by binding to those receptors, they're chemically gated, so acetylcholine binds to those receptors. It is going to allow sodium to come into the muscle fiber. And that's going to lead to a change from negative potential to a positive, a more positive voltage or potential. The acetylcholine is going to be degraded by acetylcholinesterase and then it will um, diffuse away from the junction and ultimately back up into the axon terminal. Many toxins, drugs, and diseases interfere with events at the neuromuscular junction. Um, myasthenia gravis, which is thought to be an autoimmune disorder, characterized by drooping upper eyelids, difficulty swallowing and talking, and generalized mu muscle weakness involves the shortage of ACH receptors because the person's own antibodies attack their ACH receptors. So you can have all the acetylcholine um, available, have as much available as possible. If you don't have the receptors for it, then it's not going to do its job and lead to a muscle contraction. Since the person's own antibodies attack those receptors, it suggests that this is an autoimmune disease, which is when your own your your nervous system attacks cells of your own body. Okay, now generating the action potential across the sarcolemma. Remember, sarcolemma is the plasma membrane of the muscle fiber, so we want to generate an action potential from the end plate potential. So the first thing that has to happen is we have to generate the end plate potential, which we did in the last, um, that's what we have just done um, coming into this, these events. Um, then we have to have depolarization and repolarization. Uh, depolarization is going to occur when sodium ions enter into the cell. Repolarization is going to occur as calcium ions exit. All right, the end plate potential is re reached because the acetylcholine um, binded to the uh, ac acetylcholine receptors on the sarcolemma of the muscle fiber. Some potassium comes into the muscle fiber. More potassium comes in than sodium goes out. And that makes the interior of the sarcolemma less negative or more positive and that is the end plate potential is a little bit more of a positive value than the resting potential.